everyone. I hope you are having a wonderful day. I am back at you once again with another DIY video. This video is going to be a Chanel box and it's not going to be all Dollar Tree stuff. Um, some stuff is going to be from Hobby Lobby. So um, let me show you what you're going to need. I found this box at the Dollar Tree and this is really pretty. But we're going to do something else with it. And I believe this is a 6 by 6 box. So it's pretty big. I don't think I'll have any need for the cover. So I think I'm just going to toss that. You are going to need your hot glue gun. Um, I bought some really gorgeous um, glittery craft paper when they had it on sale for half off. So this paper is $1.99. This is the specialty card stock. And um, I got it for a dollar. And this is so gorgeous. I don't know if the camera's going to pick up all of the glitter and bling off of this, but this is amazing. This is glitter paper and it is uh, striped black and white. And then this is the other glitter paper. And this is all black super super gorgeous and when I saw the paper I just thought Chanel black and white <laughs> okay so we're going to be using this special stock paper to cover this box you're going to need some Chanel logos and I can always send you these in a word document um, from my previous Chanel um, mirrored box and um, if you haven't seen that video I'll link it in the description box below uh, you're also going to need a mini frame from the Dollar Tree and I bought some gross grain ribbon from Walmart and I believe this was like two dollars 197 so um, this is the three and sorry this is the one and a half inch um, gross grain black ribbon of course you'll need some scissors and then you will also need some black foam paper or some black felt I decided to use the foam paper because I felt like it would probably stick better with the glue than the felt okay um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started um, let me get my glue gun out of the way and um, I'm gonna be using Gorilla Glue by the way so what I'm going to do is once again, like I always do, I'm going to reposition the camera so that it's just facing towards the project and not me. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start to cover the inside of this box with this um, foam paper. And um, I'm just going to kind of sort of measure it out somewhat. And um, you want to do it where when you mark it, you mark it a little bit inward. You don't want to mark it right at the edge and just kind of um, just do a, a sort of what I call a tag marking. You just want to kind of sort of mark it um, at the bottom and on the side. And the best way to cut it is to line up the very edge of the foam against the box. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold it over into a straight line. I don't think I need to use a, um, a ruler for this. So I'm just going to fold it with my hands and get a crease in it. And that's where I'm going to cut. Because it doesn't have to be exact because it's going to be hidden inside. But, you know, if you want to do the project like absolutely perfect, you can use a ruler. And I'm going to do the same thing on the side. I'm just going to line it up, fold it get a crease in it, and then cut it right on that line. Okay, and that should work. It does work. Okay, it does work. So I'm going to use this as a template for all four sides. Um, so that I can cover all four sides inside of the box. Okay, I've cut out two so far. And again, you know, try to cut it on the edge of the, um, 
trying to cut it right at the edge so that at least one side of it will be absolutely straight. So I'm going to cut another one. And again, it doesn't have to be super, super perfect. It's just to kind of, you know, cover the inside of the box and make it all blend so that you're not looking at, you know, black and white on the outside and blue on the inside, unless you don't care. So this is my last one. This is my fourth one that I'm cutting out. Okay, so actually you only needed two pieces of foam instead of three. So I've cut all four pieces of foam out. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue it on the inside to uh, make sure I cover up the inside. Actually, I think I'm going to cut one more because I think the initial one that I cut, the first one, was a little short. And this one is perfect. So maybe you do get three pieces of foam just in case you make a mistake. All right. So I'm going to get my hot glue gun. So I'm going to go ahead and start taking my foam. I'm going to put it inside the box and I'm going to start to uh, glue it down with some hot glue. And of course, I will have to work extremely fast. Okay. I'm going to hot glue my other piece and stick it inside. Or well, I think probably what is the best thing to do is just to go ahead and glue it. Take your hot glue and glue it from the inside and then stick the foam inside of it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to work extremely fast. Because you know you don't have that much time with this stuff. I got the foam inside of the box and I'm just going to cut the top where some pieces were just a little bit too tall so I'm just going to trim uh, at the top. Okay and so we're not going to worry about what it looks like at the top because this is going to get uh, covered over with ribbon so it doesn't matter so we just wanted to just make sure that the inside was uh, black all right so we have successfully covered the inside so that it's all black with the foam paper and we're not going to worry about the fact that it might be a little rugged up at the top where i was kind of sort of like trimming because that's going to get covered over with ribbon so that's the second thing that we're going to do we're going to go ahead so we're not going to worry about that. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to start going ahead and covering this box um, on the outside with the glitter paper. So I'm going to start off um, with the black and white paper first. And I'm trying to decide which way I want to line it up if I want it vertical or horizontal. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it... Um, I'm going to do it this way because I, I think I like that a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the paper down and I'm going to get my pen and I'm going to measure this out very carefully because I was kind of sloppy with the foam paper because that's not going to show. But this I want to take my time. So take your box, take your piece of paper, sit your paper down and line it up to the very edge so that at least you'll have two straight corners. Then you want to trace it with a pen or uh, a pencil, doesn't matter. And just leave yourself a little bit of room for play. Don't do it exact in case, you know, you make a little mistake. You've got a little bit of room. 
So just kind of leave a tiny bit of room when you're doing this um, so that you have a little room for mess ups. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and trace this out. Okay, and then I'm going to carefully take my time and cut this out so that it is as straight as it can possibly be. And this is textured paper. You can hear it pop. So again, you want to take your time. piece out and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my E6000 instead of my hot glue gun because I need enough time to reposition and I won't have time to reposition if I use the hot glue because it just dries way too fast. So we're going to use some E6000 on this. Now I am going to use gloves to use the E6000. I haven't been doing that previously but because I wasn't looking at the back of this thing, but it does have a warning on here that it has very toxic chemicals in it. So now I'm going to start using my gloves. The levels aren't that high, but they it, it still is toxic. So use your gloves with these 6,000 ladies, okay? And I'm just tracing the outside of the box with the E6000. I don't think you need to use that much. I may use just a little bit on the inside. And then I'm just going to take like a little uh, stick here and just kind of um, work it around the box and just smooth it out so when I lay the paper down, it'll be smooth. Okay, so I've got my E6000 on here, and I'm going to go ahead and apply my um, specialty paper. And I'm going to look for the edge that's um, straight. a better idea to use the E6000 because I wouldn't have been able to move this thing around if I used a hot glue. Um, it was just better to do it this way. And you can still use your hot glue gun as you just saw me do for the corners in case the corner just doesn't want to lay down. You can use the um, hot glue for that. So you can get an instant bond and it'll just sit down quietly. Okay, so um, I've applied this uh, first part. Um, I am going to go ahead and cut another section of this and apply it to the back. And then I'm going to trim before I start adding the black parts to it. So this is the front part. I'm going to do the other side um, because it's going to be one black and white side, another black and white side, and then solid black solid black and I think that will give it a lot of interest so now I am going to apply the second one to the other side with my E6000 and I use these really sharp scissors that I got from Walmart um, don't know the name of them Westcott titanium and these are really good these are very sharp and can get into little corners so this is what I'm using to uh, just trim a little bit all right so we have two sides already done 
have gone ahead just to save time and I've cut out my other two sections that are supposed to go on the box. Uh, the other two uh, darker panels and that was from the black sequence paper. So I've got my two pieces here and you can cut these out any way you want. You can measure the box, you can just do a template and cut all four sides out. You can do whatever works for you, okay? Um, so we're going to be taking this and just um, covering up the remaining part of this box. And um, again, it does not have to be like 100% exact. You can do some trimming, uh, which is what I plan on doing. I plan on doing some trimming. So... It doesn't matter um, about the corners or the top because we're going to cover that in ribbon to just kind of seal everything off so that it looks nice and neat when we are done. So this is the other part of that and it's starting to look really good and I'm going to go ahead once again and use my E6000. And you don't have to use E6000 if you don't want to. You can use uh, tacky glue or whatever. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and finish off using the E6000 since I already started with it. So it'll be E6000 and a little bit of hot glue. Okay, I'm back. Took a little break. And um, the box is done. This is so pretty. Look at all of that shimmer. Oh my goodness, that's freaking gorgeous. Okay, uh, now what I did notice is you are going to have a little fallout from this, so you may want to just spray some clear protective coating um, over this so that you don't have too much fallout. Um, I don't have any, but you can get it in the um, spray paint section, and maybe you can just do, you know, lightly mist over it, uh, or use some hodgepodge over it just to make sure that you don't have too much fallout. Okay, so now uh, what we're going to do is um, I've decided to deviate just a little bit and we're going to use this satin ribbon from uh, the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use this to um, cover all of the corners so that the corners don't look uh, so raw and unfinished. So I'm going to take a piece of ribbon and uh, cut it and just kind of uh, cover these corners up so that it's nice and neat and um, I think I'm not sure what I'm going to use to do this I, I think I'm going to try to use the hot glue and see um, because I don't want to use a really heavy glue because it'll see through the ribbon so um, let me see how I'm going to handle this so I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece I'm just going to take it and cut it a little bit longer, of course, so that you can wrap it underneath. So, um, go ahead and just kind of measure it just a little bit. And then this is my piece here. And I'm going to take this and glue it right into the corners. And so I'm going to try the hot glue and see how that works out. So I just did one side, you can see that, and then I'm going to put some hot glue right here and do the other side so that this will lay down. I'm not putting a whole bunch of hot glue either, I'm just trying to do a really thin line. And then, uh, as you can see, I have it attached on the corner, and then I'm just going to push these pieces underneath and inside of the box. And I'll just probably cut it a little bit shorter, because uh, it doesn't need to be this long.
Okay, so using the hot glue wasn't bad. As you can see, I've already uh, covered this corner right here uh, with the satin ribbon. And I'm going to go ahead and do the other four corners. And basically what I did was I just uh, glued one side, glued the other side. Uh, when it was time to tuck this in, I just cut a slit in it and cut a slit in it and then push, tucked it in. So I'll do another one so you can see. So I'm just going to take my ribbon. I'm going to measure a little bit longer than the actual box so I have room to tuck in. So you can see that. So I have a little bit of uh, flap here at the bottom and flap here at the top. And then um, what I'm going to do is try to center it on the corner and then uh, hot glue one section and then hot glue the other section. So I'm going to try to look, eyeball it and center it to see where it needs to be. So you want to center the ribbon right over the corner of the box, the crease in the box. And uh, once you've figured out exactly uh, your placement, then you go ahead and start uh, using your hot glue. And the good thing about it is, you know, you can always pull it off. Just if you make a mistake, you can pull it off. So that's one good thing with the hot glue. You can pull it off. And you just want to do a nice narrow strip. Uh, try not to get too clunky with the hot glue. Um, because you don't want a, a bunch of lumps in the, um, and I just messed up my ribbon too. Yeah, you want to be careful, but it comes off. Getting the hot glue on the ribbon. I'm going to take my glue and do the other side and just, I'm just trying to put a thin layer of this hot glue so that it's not clunky and then it ends up, you know, you, you use too much glue and then it just ends up bleeding over onto the box. And then I just hold it real tight and then press it down with my fingers. going to cut a slit in it so I can kind of um, push it down in, in the corner so you see I cut a little flat there So I have finished covering these corners with the satin ribbon. Um, as you can see, I finished them off. It looks very neat. And um, of course, you know, you can always go back and clean up a little bit of the hot glue. If any of the white part of the hot glue is showing, you can take your time and clean that up. Um, and now what I'm doing is I'm taking the ribbon and I am going around the top. Uh, with my hot glue so I'm just um, taking the ribbon and going around the very top actually going to finish measuring this and cutting it so I'm taking my, I'm taking my hot glue gun and I'm doing a, a very thin line at the top I'm not using a whole lot of glue and then I'm just taking my ribbon and coming around trying to keep it as straight as possible and then this is the last side so same thing I'm just using a small uh, not putting too much pressure because I just want a thin line of glue and then I'm just coming around with my ribbon 
and uh, just going all the way around and leaving some space at the top so I can fold it in okay so you want to you want to tuck that in. you want to fold it over so you can hide the raw edges up at the top okay so I'm, I, I glued it down halfway with some lip over the top so I can glue it over and then it will be completely finished finished off So now I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to, uh, my hot glue, and I'm going to apply it to the, to the rim of the box and a little bit below the rim so that I can fold it over very slowly and um, hide those raw edges. So that's what I'm doing right now. Oh, I tell you, this hot glue string is a pain in the butt. And what I might do is just take my scissors and just cut a little slit at the corner. That's called easing. Um, just so I can kind of uh, push it in. So I'm just going to cut, like I said, a very tiny slit just to ease the fabric a little bit so it makes it easier for me to um, push it in so I'm gonna go again with my hot glue okay so I've got two areas done here on the side and I'm gonna keep going until I am done only got two corners and the top and I will be done okay so now the box uh, all the raw edges have been covered with the um, satin ribbon um, as well as on the top and what I learned is that I would not use the half inch ribbon I believe it's a half an inch um, here it is I think it is one eighth of an inch okay so I would not use the one eighth of an inch on the top I would use uh, a half an inch or a whole a half an inch or an inch so that you can tuck the ribbon down a little bit further so I wasn't able to tuck it down as far as I wanted to also I probably would use the E6000 instead of the hot glue because the hot glue does not dry clear it dries with a white film and this is all black so that's what I've learned so what I would do is I would use the a half an inch to an inch satin to cover up the top um, so you can push it down a little bit further and just use some E6000 instead of using the hot glue because the hot glue doesn't dry clear. But um, we made it through the project. So I still think it looks pretty good. And um, now we're going to go to the next step and that is taking this uh, mini frame that I got from uh, the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up the frame and loading our logo into the mini frame and I printed out these logos on some white stock paper so I'm gonna go ahead and cut my logo out I'm gonna pull out the uh, cord board and everything out of the frame and um, I'm just going to try to measure this thing so that I can put it into our mini frame what I decided to do with this mini frame is to um, take the backing, take some of the black sequence craft paper and cut it the same length as the backing. And then I decided to just go ahead and cut the logo out, um, just do a cutout of the logo instead of just using it just uh, like I would here, just plain like that, I decided to just go ahead and cut it out and then paste it onto, um, I'm gonna, think I'm gonna use some, um, I guess I'll use hot glue and just paste it onto the back and that will kind of bring in the same theme as the box. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my black sequence craft paper and um, I'm going to just um, use a little bit of hot glue 
and attach it to the backing of the um, frame. Then I'm going to take my my logo and uh, just put, well, I don't think I want to use the hot glue because if I don't position it correctly, I won't be able to move it around. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my tacky glue on this. To attach the logo, I'm going to use some tacky glue um, because I want to be able to move the logo around if it's not positioned correctly. And if I use the hot glue, I won't be able to do that. So I'm going to add a little bit of tacky glue onto the back of this logo. And hopefully I'm centering this thing correctly. I hope so. Okay, so there we have it. I have attached it with my um, khaki glue. And it's not down all the way, but that's okay. It will eventually stick. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it into the frame and see if I got the position correct. Looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and close this frame up. So that looks pretty good to me. Uh, I like the way this is coming together. Um, now what we're going to do is we are going to attach it uh, with some hot glue to the front of our box. And that's looking good so far. And uh, position this between the two black lines. I'm actually going to position it between the two black lines. And then the white line will be in the middle. So, I need to turn it towards me so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we have our logo on there. It looks amazing. I love the way it came out. I'm glad I did cut the logo out and put it against the uh, sequence uh, back area. It just kind of ties everything in. So now what we're going to do as the final step is we are going to take some ribbon and wrap it around the top of this and tie a bow in it like I did the last uh, Chanel uh, box. And then we're going to take a little embellishment, this earring, and we're going to, with the pearl inside of it, and we're going to attach it to the ribbon. So I'm just going to turn this around towards me. I'm going to take my ribbon and I'm going to go all the way around. And I'm going to tie a bow. And hopefully I've got this positioned properly. So here is my bow. And then I'm going to add a little piece of embellishment. And this is a like a little rhinestone, um, rhinestone and pearl embellishment that I'm going to attach directly on top of the bow. I'm going to just trim this ribbon just a little bit because I don't want it to uh not show the nice little logo that we got going of the bow i've trimmed a little bit off the top so that we're not hiding the the logo because the logo is important it is a chanel box right so this is it i think it came out amazing um i love it and this is the side, this is the back, the other side, the inside. And I didn't cover the bottom, but you can. You can cover this with some black felt as well. I just didn't have time because my I'm losing battery life. But you can cover this with some black felt. But so this is it. This is our, our beautiful glitter. Um, yes, this is glitter paper. <laughs> I keep wanting to say sequins, but it's glitter paper. This is our beautiful glitter Chanel box, and this came out awesome. Again, what I've learned is I probably would do a little bit better on the top by using a much deeper ribbon than the one that I used. Um, but other than that, I think it came out awesome. And you can do some extra things. You can use uh, more embellishment if you want. Um... Uh, you could probably put some pearls up at the top too if you wanted to and I might just end up doing that just to kind of cover over the mistake that I made 
but um other than that yeah you have a awesome chanel box that you can put so many beautiful things in you can put flowers in here you could put your makeup in here it's very sturdy um you'll have this for a long time and yeah so it came out great so our box is complete and i did one final step and that was to add some uh very narrow sequence black sequence to the top and uh to the top of the box and i also added it around the side so i just put a little bit of sequence around the top just to kind of finish it off a little bit nicer um and this was not expensive it was only 2 dollars from hobby lobby so it's um i don't know how many inches this is but it's probably it's one fourth of an inch my bad so it's one fourth of an inch this is what it looks like and i put it all on the top of the box and at the very edge all the way around again just to finish it off and make it look a little bit nicer so this is optional if you want to do that but i thought it looked a lot better doing that guys so we are completely done and um again i think it looks amazing give you the 360 gorgeous beautiful beautiful and again you can use this or as an organizer or you can put flowers in it um, I have some flowers here I just mounted in uh, on some um, flower foam and I think the red really brings out the black and white I think it looks really great and I just used some small closed uh, roses that I got from the Dollar Tree so that looks awesome absolutely amazing and then I made a smaller box as well and this one, I just used a smaller box from the Dollar Tree. I used a red box. And then I put some of the black shimmering uh, craft paper on one side and on the other side. And then I just uh, left the black, the back red, left a front red, and it complements the flowers. And then I did the same treatment. I just tied a bow around it, a satin bow. And then put a little bit of embellishment right here. The same embellishment that I used for this one. Just so it can tie it in and make it look like a set. And then I just attached a Chanel logo. And what I did was just to kind of bump it out a little bit. I just took the top to this box and just cut it down so it was small enough to um, actually mount to the front of the box. Because the box is pretty small. And I couldn't find any frames this size, so I just used the box top, cut it down, uh, wrapped some black masking tape on it, and then taped my uh, Chanel logo onto the front. So that's it. So you have a nice little kind of sort of coordinating set. I, mean, I think it looks really chic. So that's it, guys. Um, this is the Chanel sequence box using uh hobby lobby and dollar tree items so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as always don't forget to rate and subscribe and i will see you in the next diy video okay have a awesome day bye bye